On the 14th of April each year in Japan, local farmers travel to Yuto City for the memorial of a small English woman in her 50s. She never set foot in Japan, but what connects them is the ocean. Each year, farmers across the Japanese coast celebrate Dr. Kathleen Mary Drew Baker, the mother of the sea. And it all has to do with nori. If you've had sushi, you've had nori. Nori is that wonderful seaweed that sushi chefs wrap around nearly every dish. In fact, nori has always been part of Japan. In the 7th century BCE, it was offered at shrines of Shinto gods. In the 8th century AD, it was used to pay taxes to the emperor. Nori has served as a staple crop for centuries, keeping Japan fed and fueling its economy. However, it's fickle, suddenly disappearing one summer and returning another. For this, it was nicknamed the Gambler's Grass. With Japan's reliance on nori, the stakes were high to understand its life cycle, but that would remain a mystery until 1949. World War II has just ended. Japan had quickly polluted its waters as it industrialized. Fishing fleets and farms had been specifically targeted by American bombing raids, uprooting livelihoods and the nori staple from the general food supply. 3.3 million Japanese citizens would return to a country that had just seen the most violent display of military weaponry in history, and there wouldn't be any food. However, a single woman would change that. 20 years earlier, Dr. Kathleen Drew Baker would be fired from the University of Manchester because the college did not employ married women. She was demoted to an unpaid research fellowship. Moreover, at the time, women in universities were pigeonholed into botany because it wasn't related to mathematics or anything with a knife. But Dr. Drew Baker could care less about plants above ground. She was interested in slimy weeds. By the 1940s, Dr. Drew Baker had devoted her career to red algae, particularly Welsh Porphyra ambiguous. She set out to decipher the plant's unknown life cycle. Specifically, understanding why it was Porphyra would disappear each winter and reappear in the summer. After nine years of work, she'd accidentally discover something. For the longest time, Baker had been attempting to grow Porphyra in a tidal tank in her lab. On a whim, she would choose oyster shells to act as a substrate for the tank. While she had finally produced Porphyra spores, the oyster shells also developed a pinkish sludge. At first, she feared her test was contaminated, until she identified the sludge as Conchiceus rosea. Conchiceus always arrived in the summer, and Porphyra in the winter. It didn't take her long to realize these two species were one and the same at different phases. In her paper, Conchiceus Phase in the Life History of Porphyra Ambiguous, published in the 1949 issue of Nature, Baker revealed that C. rosea was actually a juvenile sporophyte phase of Porphyra. More importantly, she chronicled her methodology for getting porphyra to propagate in controlled conditions. Only by chance did Japanese marine biologist Sokiki Sagawa pick up a 1949 issue of Nature and read Baker's findings. He realized that Japanese nori was a variety of porphyra sharing the same life cycle. With the help of other biologists, they replicated Baker's methodology for propagating porphyra, and suddenly, gambler's grass was a guarantee every time. What followed was the industrial production of nori that saved millions from starving and kick-started the Japanese economy. Nori fishermen pooled money to construct a statue of Dr. Kathleen Drew Baker in honor of her work, but she died in 1957 before she could travel to Japan to model for the sculpture. The fishermen would later construct a memorial for her in Yuto City, overlooking the vast Ariaki Sea. On April 14, 1963, they would bury her scientific papers under her memorial stone that they donned in her university cap and gown for the ceremony. Now, every year, farmers lay out sheets of the season's nori harvest on her memorial along with samples of the year's crops. The story of Baker and Nori show us that understanding the ocean can save lives. My grandfather grew up in Hiroshima and was six years old when an atomic bomb detonated above his city. The stories he told me about the famine and disarray that followed the war could have been far worse without Dr. Kathleen Drew Baker. And I might not be here today. So thank you, Baker, for saving my life with slime. あと
俺だってこのマイナス10度のところシジミが取れるって頑張ってんだよ絶対やってみろ必ず目標達成できるだからこそネガギバ